Besides being known for its flamingo flowers, Liujia is also the town of cones. At the peak of its tile production, there were close to 100 cones pumping out black smoke in Liujia, or Black Town as it was sometimes called. Let's follow the camera and check out this town of cones. Hey folks, David here. Uh, Liujia has a hidden secret. Liujia actually has a lot of uh, roof tile cones in this area and uh, this whole industry actually started more than 300 years ago but now it's a uh, fading business. There's only very few remaining in this area so uh, let's go take a look. So it turns out the clay is the reason for the concentration of cones in Liujia. During the Kingdom of Dongning, General Chen Yonghua, a general of Kosinga, began enlisting men to reclaim the land while teaching the residents how to make tiles from clay. This led to the red tiles of Liujia to become a well-known building material throughout Taiwan. The first step in tile making is acquiring the clay, which requires you to obtain a permit from an issuing authority. Once you have the permission, you can now excavate while following a set of guidelines. Then you can bring the clay to the kiln. The next step is vacuum extrusion, where air bubbles are expelled from the clay while it's being molded into shape. Lastly, it's cut with a wire clay cutter. An extra step is required in making the red roof tiles. The clay must be shaped into an arch first, before fixing in place and left to air dry. It takes approximately one month to air dry. Once it's been air dried, it's ready to be fired. It takes a lot of time and effort to fire clay in a tortoise kiln. Before firing, a layer of mud must be applied to its outer walls, the war to prevent the heat from dissipating during firing. Next, we must ensure that it's dry. Too much humidity will negatively impact the quality of the final fire product. There are three to four vent holes on a tortoise kiln that helps with the convection inside. The space can fire a quarter of a million red tiles at once. Before the red tiles could go in, Bricks are placed on the floor and the two sides of the kiln to help with the heat distribution. Finally, the kiln is sealed. In the early days, the old masters could visually gauge the fire's temperature. If the fire glows a dark red, then it would be about 700 degrees Celsius. Once fired, it takes another month to cool off. It takes about five months from start to finish. This kiln produces three types of tiles. Roof tiles are further divided into red tiles, eave tiles, and upper concave tiles. As for the walls, there's the brick tiles and the unique dozi tiles, both with grooves on their backsides. Floor tiles come in a wider variety. There is rectangular, hexagonal, octagonal, and even Y-shaped tiles. Each piece of brick and tile comes with its own cultural story. There are only a handful of tile cones still in business. This fourth generation tile cone insists on owning the traditional art of kiln firing. To promote the tile cone culture, they're open for reservation if you'd like to steal the kiln. They also assist many cultural creatives with their kiln firing techniques. They're indeed relentless when it comes to preserving culture. Man, it's quite the feeling to be able to see one of the last remaining kilns in Liujia. And this kiln is almost 100 years old. Even though the heyday of tile making in Liujia is long gone, this kiln is still busy pumping out tiles and other products. So uh, let's hope this kiln will be able to stay for 100 more years for the future generation to see. I just walked into a ranch, and as far as the eye can see, there's a lot of pottery here. Um, rumor has it that they actually have a seyao or snake kiln back there. Now normally people associate a seyao or snake kiln with suili, but Liujia has it as well. Plus, I think I smell coffee, so uh, let's go! Some of the kilns in Liujia are transitioning into the tourism industry. Not only can you enjoy good coffee, but also experience throwing firsthand. It doesn't really matter if you've never done pottery before, as the professional one-to-one -one lesson here will get you acquainted with the joy of your throwing in no time. First, we have to knead the clay. What I'm doing is trying to uh, pound the clay into a, uh, a comb shape, so it will sit on the wheel. So what I'm doing right now is trying to uh, 
find the uh, center of uh, the clay so it would, it would uh, be symmetrical. You can shape it into any form you like. Well, I guess it's done. Uh, not too bad for uh, first attempt, right? You can see a snake cone here. It's very well preserved. The firing time of the snake cone is up to three months. So unless a large number of powder needs to be fired, it's rarely used. That was really cool. I especially like the uh, snake cone we have here. And uh, the DIY workshop, again, it's always a highlight of my day. And uh, so this is the finished product of the, uh, the bowl that I was trying to make earlier. And besides making your own bowl or uh, cups, you can also enjoy a cup of nice coffee here.